Iran and the UN nuclear watchdog will resume talks on Friday, more than two months after the previous failed round. Iran insists it only wants peaceful energy, but the West thinks a bomb is in the making. Hopes are high then for these negotiations, and all the while sanctions from the US and Europe continue to hit Iranian citizens hard. Let's go live to Tehran now, talk to a journalist and political commentator, Ahmed Reza Imadi. Um, thanks for being on the programme. You're live on RT International. My name's Kevin Owen, Thank talking you. to you there. G glad you can hear me. Good to see you. Your family, I I gather is among those feeling the brunt along with the rest of the citizens uh, of the sanctions imposed on Iran. How particularly are you being affected, sir? Can you paint a, a brief picture for us? Yeah, absolutely. My father went to the war in the 1980s and uh, what happened to him was when he uh, returned home, he was diagnosed with uh, a PTSD. So uh, for the past three decades, he's been receiving medication uh, for the uh, for the PTSD and as well as the uh, he became a diabetic after a year uh, after mm. a few years and uh, now uh, at that time he was he was fighting in the war as a medic actually he was not fighting uh, mm. in the war front he was helping the injured mm. now he's fighting for for uh, his medicine for getting his uh, medication why because of the sanctions <clears throat> not the sanctions that the United States illegally has imposed on Iran. Uh, are not uh, banning the sales of drugs to Iran, but they are blocking any financial transactions with Iran. That means that the Iranian pharmaceutical companies cannot buy uh, vital medicine from uh, major uh, pharmaceutical companies in the world. Oh, so I see. people so, like my father, so these they're not are, getting the, they're not getting the medication. I understand. So these aren't just specific drugs you're talking about. This is affecting a, a, a whole raft, for instance, of drugs, just focusing on this little part of life. And um, you can't even get them locally because the, the uh, ingredients, for want of a better word, can't be imported. Yeah, these, yeah? Are, made, these are made in the European Union and mm. in the United States. Mm. And uh, it's not only diabetic people. You have uh, 8,000 hemophiliac people in Iran who uh, badly need those medicines and they're not getting it because uh, these medicines are being produced in the United States, so as far are being as your produced dad in the goes, European goes, Union. And I because just, we can't buy them, they can't use it. And uh, that's uh, putting their life in danger. I understand. So I, I just want to get a picture for our viewers. of uh, We hear time and time again about the, the broader way people on the street are affected. But I just really wanted to focus uh, on your family because you've so kindly come to, to be with us. How is this affecting your dad then? Is it affecting his, his lifespan? Well, it's, if, it's affecting the whole family. You know, it's affecting my dad because he can't get the medication that he needs. It's, if, it's affecting the family because uh, for the past three decades, we've been dealing with a man uh, who is sick and uh, uh, who can't be cured because uh, of the problems that the problems are now becoming bigger because he's become older mm -hmm. and weaker and more vulnerable. And if he can't get the medicines, then um, he, his life is in danger. So this is my particular story, but it's not only my father. And uh, th uh, thousands of thousands of Iranians across the country, uh, they have these problems. And even in Iraq, the chemical weapons that the West provided Saddam Hussein with, uh, and Saddam Hussein used those chemical weapons against his own people in Iraq, a lot of people in Iraq have those problems. And in Iran, the problems are bigger because of the sanctions. The sanctions are affecting normal, ir ordinary Iranians. The sanctions are not affecting the government. The sanctions are affecting ordinary Iranians. That's the message. And the world needs to know that. And I'm, I'm, I'm wondering why the Iranian government is not taking the United States to international courts because of that. Because uh, the sanctions uh, that the United States has imposed on Iran are genocidal sanctions. They're killing people. They're killing ordinary civilians. They're killing medics, retired people. They're killing people who have not, they've got nothing to do with Iran's nuclear well, problem. Well, give us other cases. You've talked message. about your dad the there. World. So you've talked about your dad there. Give us some other cases where it's really biting hard. Yeah, a lot of people in Iran, cancer patients, for instance, mm. they're not getting the medication they need. And it's, it's, it's really dangerous for them. You know, they can't wait. And uh, because of the financial transactions have been cut off between Iran and the West because of the sanctions, uh, they can't get the medication. Mm. This, is, this is very simple. In 10 the seconds, West what would your that. message be? And the Americans and the Europeans who are paying taxes to the governments, they need to know that. The governments are killing my people. In 10 Ordinary seconds, people. So in 10 seconds, what would your message be to the people that are imposing these sanctions? The, the, people who are imp uh, the, the people who are imposing these sanctions, they need to know that this is not affecting the government. This is affecting the people. They are killing Iranian people. They are committing genocide against the Iranian people. 
And that's exactly what's happening on the ground. And the United Nations has shamelessly remained silent. The United Nations uh, is practically doing nothing. It, is lost, it has lost its credibility. Thank you for being on the programme, Hamid Razir Mahdi, and we, we, we wish your dad well as Thank well, you. of course, to Rambay's journalist and political commentator live from the Iranian capital.